The Kehlel in Crown Heights, which is under Maskiris of the Rebbe, gives out from time to time a journal, a Kevitz of Chidush Teire, called Kevitz Divre Teire. So I would like to explain how it all started. It was Tovshin Lamed Gimel, when some young light from our Kita were still in Kehlel, decided that it's time that we give out a Kevitz. We all knew that the Rebbe was very for giving out kevets in Chedush in the yeshivas, so we assumed that for sure the Rebbe would be happy if we'd give out the kevets. So we decided to ask the Rebbe. So what we did was, we had some of the Yungelite write up Chedush HaTayr, Pilpulim, different sugyas, and we wrote a letter to the Rebbe. I signed it, B'Shem Chav Reamareches, and we wrote to the Rebbe like this, that here we're sending in copies of certain Pilpulim that Yungelite wrote, and these are just a sample, but there will be more in the same style. And we're asking the Rebbe if we should give out the kevets with this Chedusha And we wrote to the Rebbe also that we will write eventually a Pesach Dover if it come, when the time comes, if we're going to give it out. Another thing we saw, wrote, that we are Matsya. We suggest that this kevet should be printed. We wrote it because in the Kevetsim of 770, Pilpula Talmidim, that the Kanim wrote Chidush it wasn't really printed, real print. It was typed and made like photostats offset of the typing. So here we wrote to the Rebbe that we suggest we should print it mamish. And then we asked the Rebbe a few questions. One question was that maybe we should add Pilpulim in Chesidus. But nobody in the Kehla was at that time ready to write a Pilpul Chassidus, so we suggested that since there are some young light in Kehla who had originally, years before, written Chidusha Teireh Pilpul in Chassidus, printed in other journals, maybe we should reprint it here, so we should have some Pilpul in Chassidus. That's one question. Another question, we want to print a Sikhe as a Hagdome to the Kevitz. So we asked the Rebbe, should we take an old Sikhe that's Mogi already, print it someplace, and we'll print it here again? Or should we give it to the Rebbe a Sikha the Rebbe Shiva Magia? In other words, we should prepare a Sikha and the Rebbe will Magia a new Sikha. And then we ask the Rebbe what name we should give the Kavitz. So on this letter, the Rebbe wrote like this. Obviously, he agreed that it should happen. And he wrote like this. Concerning the style of how these people are written. So the Rebbe writes, Echod Hamasim Shayaver. That a person who fits to this job should go over it. And the word Sheyave is written in quotations. Then he continued, concerning the contents of the Pulpulim. So the Rebbe writes like this, It's Kedai, that one that is not from the members of the Kehle, and they underlined the word Lei. And then he added the parenthesis, a base, or maybe two people. Yaver al kol shebadaitom lahatvis al mekufye should go over everything that they're planning to print at least superficially, and then he wrote in parentheses why because ulay tzorechli es eze shine v'cholu maybe there'll have to be certain changes so you have to have somebody or one or two people to look it over. But Nigeia was asked the Rebbe if we should reprint some pulim mechsides that some of the you the light of the kelel wrote someplace else so the Rebbe wrote like this loy natu. And then he writes on the side, I'll call upon him Kevitz Aleph, Harishin, at least the first Kevitz, Tzorechli Eskulei Chodesh. Happens, has to be completely new. And then when it said that it was some people that were printed in Pilpala Talmidim, so the Rebbe writes, Be'im nit was a Pilpala Talmidim, not to print it again. But again, the Sikhe, the Rebbe writes, that to print the Sikhe that was Mugi already, but was not printed. Ukinal, like he said before, the first one has to be completely new. Concerning which name to call it, the Rebbe wrote, Hatsoes, write in suggestions, with a question mark. What are your suggestions? And then at the end of the page, the Rebbe wrote, concerning two of the Pulpulim that were handed in to the Rebbe, he wrote like this, Le'inyan Bori Veshemo, concerning the Inyan of the Sugi Bori Veshemo, which one of the Pulpulim were about, so the Rebbe writes, the Encyclopedia Talmudis. You can look in the Encyclopedia Talmudians, you'll find more information. And Lagabe Mayan Bekolshu, one of the Papulim was about Mikveh, but Mayan Bekolshu, the Rebbe writes, Besefer Gela Salias. In the Sefer Gela Salias, you can have more information, you should look there. So the Rebbe seemed to be very happy and gave certain instructions how we should go about it. So what we did right away was, we looked to see if there's a Sikha that's Mugi that was not printed and we couldn't find. 
So what we did was, we prepared a nusich and gave it into the Rebbe. And then we wrote to the Rebbe, Hatzoes, what it should be called. And the Hatzoes that we wrote was one Share Kailil, or Share Hakailil, or Kevitz Chedusha And we gave it into the Rebbe. And for a long time, we didn't hear an answer. To be continued in the next broadcast, what continued, how it happened later. While we were waiting for the answer of the Rebbe, which took a long time that the Rebbe didn't answer, and it seemed like because he didn't have time to be Magia the Siche. So the meantime, time passed, and since some of us who were involved in this were also the ones that were writing the Sichas for Lakuti Sichas, so what we did was we took that Sichas that we had prepared for the Rebbe to be Magia for the Kavits, and we used that Sichas for a Likud, for Parsha Bechukesai, for Lakuti Sichas. And the Rebbe was magiyat for Lekut HaSichas, and it came out for Lekut HaSichas. As soon as it came out for Lekut HaSichas, we thought to ourselves, now we have an opportunity to bring up the subject again. Because the whole reason that took time, it seems, because the Rebbe wanted a new Sichas, and the Rebbe didn't have time to magi a special Sichas for the Kavits, so that's why it's taken time. But now that the Sichas just came out anyway, so since it just came out, it could be considered that it's new. And we could use that to print in the, in the Sefer. So therefore, we took the opportunity and we gave into the, we wrote to the Rebbe a letter. I signed it B'Shem Hamareches, and this is what we wrote: that a while ago we gave in the Rebbe uh, concerning the Asicha to Magia for the Kavitz. The pail that came out now for look the Sichas a Parsha B'Chukesai, and the reason we gave it in them because the Rebbe said it should be new. But now, since it just came out for the Kutis Sichas, it could be considered new, maybe, and maybe now we could print this Kavitz and print the Sicha there. So therefore, we asked the Rebbe. Number one, can we give out the kevets now? And can we print the sikh? So on those words, the Rebbe underlined those words that we're able to give out the kevets now and we're able to print the sikh. Then we wrote to the Rebbe also. The Rebbe wrote last time that we should give in recommendations about a name. And we had written two recommendations. Really, we could call it three. One is, call it Shari Kailil or Shari HaKailil. And the second one is, Kevets Chedusha So we're asking the Rebbe if those are acceptable. So the Rebbe, what he did was on the side, he wrote, I think that you gave out already a Kavitz. Why change? And on the names, what happened was the Rebbe crossed out the whole thing. He crossed outside the line, the word Share Kela with a hey, maybe. Crossed out the name Kavitz Chidusha But he made two arrows to the word Share Kela, crossed out the hey from Ha So we didn't understand two things. Number one, what did he mean? that I think that you gave out the kevitz ready, why change? And also, what name did the Rebbe want? He crossed out both, but on the other hand, there were arrows to the word Shari Kela. So we thought maybe the Rebbe meant to keep Shari Kela. So what we did was, we wrote another letter to the Rebbe, and we wrote that it seems that the Rebbe meant the name Shari Kela, so we made a copy of a Sharblat, of a cover page, with the name Kevitz Shari Kela, we gave it into the Rebbe, and we asked the Rebbe if this is right. So, when we wrote the Rebbe, Im Nochin, if it's right that it should be called Shari Kelel, the Rebbe made two exclamation points. And then he wrote, Ki ochakti gam Hashem Shari Kelel. I think I erased even the name Shari Kelel. The Tev said it's better, Kevitz Teire, a Kevitz Divre Teire. Better if you would call it Kevitz Teire or Kevitz Divre Teire. And then we wrote to the Rebbe, concerning what the Rebbe wrote, that it seems like we gave other already a Kevitz. So why change? So he wrote, probably the Rebbe means what we were planning then to give out the Kavitz a few months ago. So maybe we had a name already. So we wrote to the Rebbe that we never gave out. And Mamela, there is no name yet. And then we asked the Rebbe if we could write that it's given out by the Maskirus. The Rebbe didn't answer, but he left it, obviously, that we're able to do it. So what we did now, we prepared it to print and we wrote a Pesach Dover. And in the Pesach Dover, we wrote that this is a Kavitz for the Pulim of the Kailil. And then we also wrote that as a Hagdome to the Kavitz, we're being mighty a Sikh of the Rebbe, Sheyotso Lo'er Ba'achreino, Lachreino, but the Kutesichas the Parsha Bechakesa, that came out lately for the Kutesichas Parsha Bechakesa. So the Rebbe changed it. He, and he made it just be written like this As a Hagdome to the Kavitz, Mutak Bezech Sichas Kvet Kedushad Mushlit, it's a Sikh of the Rebbe. And then he made a star and made a ha'or on the bottom. Heitzi le'er ze'ato gam be'lekutesich ha'zeparsha b'chukesai. 
that it came out just now, also look at the Sikhas Pashim Chakesai. So then, in other words, according to this, this is something new. It came out, so the, some, this new Sikha is printed here, and it's also printed, look at the Sikhas, but it's all a new thing. And then, concerning which date to write, so the Rebbe wrote in the date Yud Beis Sivan, Tov Shin Lamed Gimel. And that was the first Kavis that came out, and then, not long after that, the Kailal, the Hist Marechas, us gave out another Kavit. This was for Chai Elul, that same year, Tov Shin Lamed Gimel. And there also printed a Siche that was printed just then in Lukut Siches of Parshav Chanan. And the Taka is written in the same style that as Agdome, we're printing here the Siche of the Rebbe, Asiyah Mashas. And on the bottom, there's a order, Hetzi Leir Zeata Gamba Lukut Siches, the Parshav Chanan. And from then on, from time to time, the Kailal gave out another Kavitz of Dipratera, and then other and other continued. I heard from the Biel, there was once somebody, he went to the Yechides, and he mentioned to the Rebbe that there are some people who are wondering why the Rebbe doesn't answer them. There are people that don't get answers from the Rebbe. And the Rebbe said, I don't know what you mean. I answer. Tell me, Lamoshel, who is somebody who complained that I don't answer? So the person said that there was this and this lady that she wrote to the Rebbe asking whether she should have an operation to remove kidney stones. She had kidney stones and the doctor said that she has to have an operation and she asked the Rebbe, the Rebbe didn't answer. So here you see the Rebbe didn't answer. So the Rebbe says, ah, this one, Kavon, I didn't answer. There's a reason why he didn't answer. That's all he said. In other words, it's not because he just neglected answering. There was a reason why he didn't answer. The pale, a short while later, the stones came out by themselves. She didn't do the operation because the Rebbe didn't answer, so she wouldn't do the operation without the Rebbe's answer. But they came out by themselves. So Rebbe told me this is what the Rebbe meant. The Kavani didn't answer because he knew that by not answering, she will not do it. And then he didn't want her to do it, but if he would have tell her, told her not to do it, and then the stones came out by themselves, Ubi oh, would make a whole fuss. as a mephis of the Rebbe. And the Rebbe tried to make everything in Derech HaTeveh. So therefore, by not answering, she didn't do it anyway, and it came out, and now no one is attributing as a mephis. So the Rebbe, the Rebbe, it was a special kavone not to answer, so it shouldn't turn into a mephis. When we moved to Miami in the year of Tafshin Lama Dalad, which is the end of 1973, we rented a house. Then, when I went to Yechides, Shvuas, that year Shvuas, I asked the Rebbe if I should buy a house. And the Rebbe said, Aglai Chazach, that's the right thing to do. So when we came back from Shvuas, we got an agent, and the agent helped us look for a house, and we were looking around for a house to buy. We found one house which seemed fitting to our needs, so we thought this is a good house to buy. So I wrote to the Rebbe and asked the Rebbe if I should get an offer for this house. And the Rebbe answered, Katsas yididim mevinim. You should do according to advice of friends who are mevinim, understand, these inyonim, understand, real estate, etc., etc., so I spoke to a few people who are Yedidim Mevinim, and they advised me that it's a good idea to give it an offer, but they said, go, the lowest, the highest you should go is to a certain price. So I gave them an offer. They came back with an offer of much more. I said, I'm not taking it. So I went a little bit up, and then when they went a little bit down. Finally, going back and forth, back and forth, the end was that... I came to a point that I was going to give the maximum that the Yedidim Mevinim said to give. And they didn't want to go down that low. And finally, it went down that there was a difference in two and a half thousand dollars. And by this time, it was already the end of the time of the contract that that night, at midnight, if I don't take it, then the contract will expire. And this was a house which seemed to be fit, fitting to our needs. And they said they're not going any lower, and there's a difference in two and a half thousand dollars. Now, in my mind, $2,500 is not so much, especially if there was a mortgage of 20 years, how much can that be already? So I wanted to know if I should go up with the $2,500, more than what the Yedidim Mevinim told me. So since it was the last day, I called Rabbi Yom and Klein. It must have been about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. And I said to him that the contract will expire and there's a difference in $2,500. Should I take it or not? Should I give them into the two and a half, extra $2,500 or not? Could you ask the Rebbe? About an hour, or less than an hour later, Rabbi Yomim Klein calls me, and he says he gave an etzettel to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe answered, I think I answered him already that he should do according to the eights of Yedidim Evinim. So I understood that I have to stick to 
the offer that I gave and not to go up the two and a half thousand dollars. So I called up the agent and I said, sorry, I'm not doing it. The agent said, what's going on? Just for two and a half thousand dollars, you're going to lose the house. The house was nice and the house fit to your needs, etc., etc. For two and a half thousand dollars, you're going to lose it. It doesn't make any sense. So I told the agent, sorry, but that's what I'm going to do. And the agent said, okay. And that night, we were thinking we lost the house, even though it's for two and a half thousand dollars. But the Rebbe said to stick to what the Yedidim Evinim said, so we didn't go up, and that's it. The pale, six o'clock in the morning, I get a call from the agent. The agent says that the last minute, the sellers decided to give in, and they went down to the price that you offered. So here's because the Rebbe saved us the two and a half thousand dollars when he said that I answered you already that you should go according to that Tzatz Yedidim Evinim. In Tovshin Mem Aleph, the Yeshiva Gdoyle in Miami was looking to buy a building. And a building became available, which fit, but it belonged to a guru. Rabbi Korf, who is the Shliach Roshi and the head of all the mazes of Florida, wrote to the Rebbe, described the building, and also mentioned that the building belongs to a guru. And asked the Rebbe if we were able to buy the building. And the Rebbe answered these words. You have to get an opinion of a Rav, who's a Meir Hiro, which means he's an expert in Paskinik Shailas, whether you're allowed to buy and give money to a Guru. And obviously, since the Rebbe made the Shaila, the Yeshiva did not buy that building. Reb Abba Pekarski told me that in the Yuds, him and Shalom Yisrael Chadakov, both were kids, were sitting in front of the Rebbe's room, in the Ganeid Natachten, and it was Hanukkah, and they were playing dreidel. And as they're playing dreidel, the Rebbe came from the outside, and the Rebbe was going into his room. As the Rebbe passed by and saw them playing dreidel, the Rebbe took out a dime from his pocket, threw it into the pot, took the dreidel, and made a spin, and then walked into his room. Obviously, I wasn't there, but this is what they told me, that the Rebbe put in a dime, took a spin with the dreidel, and walked into his room. Now, exactly who got the dime later, I don't know, but they said this was an experience that the Rebbe showed that he did something in participation to playing with the dreidel on Hanukkah. Our family, as we know, used to live in Cleveland. There, there was a person named Reb Aden Volman. He was a Polisher, but he had a very close shaykh to Lubavitch. So he told me that he happened to be in New York, Purim Tovshin Yud Aleph, the first Purim after the Rebbe officially accepted the Nisias. And he went to the Fabrengen. He was by the Fabrengen of the Rebbe to Purim Tovshin Yud Aleph. In the middle of the Fabrengen, the Rebbe turns around and says from far to him, he was sitting amongst the people, and the Rebbe says to him, Rebbe, zok tanigen. So he started the nigen. I forgot already which one he told me which nigen he started. But he told me the pele is that the Rebbe never saw him. The Rebbe never saw him to know who he is. I don't even think he ever wrote to the Rebbe till then. But the Rebbe called him by his name and he said, Rebbe, zok tanigen. And he sang a nigen. The Fabrengen of Purim Tovshin Yud Aleph, which was the first Purim after the Rebbe officially accepted in the Messias, was a very special Fabrengen. I obviously wasn't there, but I heard it was a very special Fabrengen. The Rebbe took a lot of mashke and said different things to different people. But one of the things I heard that the Rebbe said, I heard it from Rabbi Yael, when I told this over to other people, some people told me they heard it a little differently. I'm just going to say it over the way I heard it from Rabbi Yael, that the Rebbe wanted to give somebody mashke. And the person was standing a little far, and it was hard for him to get to the Rebbe, so he asked that somebody should pass it down. So Rav Mentlik, who was standing there, says to him, Der alte Rebbe alein will dir gem l'chaim und du betst am isol des dir The alte Rebbe himself wants to give you l'chaim, and you're asking that they should pass it down, and you're not coming up yourself to get it? So he was referring to the Rebbe as the alte Rebbe himself. So the Rebbe said... In Kabbalah, we have this concept of a kav, but after the tzimtzum, 
Hashem took a light, a line of light of Eid and Sof and brought it into the place of the Tzimtzum. And that's where the Holy Shtal Shilis goes. And there are two opinions in Kabbalah. One opinion is that the Kav, this line of Truha Yisaydar Shtal Shilis is made up of Nekudas, Nekudas. It's made up of points, 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 and that makes up the Kav. And another opinion is that it's all one Kav, Echad Oruch, one long Kav. So the Rebbe used that same term here. Whether he is Mamish Dal Rebbe or not, Depends. If it's Kav Echad Oruch, one long Kav from beginning to end, then it's Mamish Dal Terebe. If it's Osim in Nekudus, Nekudus, if it's made from pieces, pieces, points, points, Nekudus, Nekudus, that even though it's all one Kav, but each one is a separate thing, so I guess you can't say that this is Dal Terebe himself. I guess that's what the Rebbe meant. That's what Rebbe said. The Rebbe answered him when he heard him say that this is Dal Terebe Alain. That Fabringen of Purim Tov Shunyudalev was a very special Fabringen. Those that were there tell over that the Rebbe took a lot of mashkin, the Rebbe cried. And the Rebbe also later spoke about himself, belittled himself. He said, Mi ani, umo ani, who am I and what am I? And he said that I am only a tziner, I am only a pipe through which the hashpo, the Friedrich Rebbe goes, etc., etc. And more in Yonim that he said. But I want to repeat is just one expression that I remember Rebbe El told me that the Rebbe said concerning his accepting the Nasius. And he said, what became of me? Ashmate, atrapke. Ashmate, I became ashmate. Trapke is ashmate in Russian. Till now, he said, I was able to learn, I was able to daven. But now, I don't have the time to learn, I don't have time to daven. What became of me? And he was complaining about this union. And Chassidim said to the Rebbe, we don't want to hear such expressions, we don't want to hear such words. And this reminds me that this is really something's that other Rabbeim, previous Rabbeim also said, the Rebbe in the Fabrengen of Yud Gimel Tishrei Tov Shem Chav Beis, the Rebbe told the story about the Tzemach Tzedek, that once the Tzemach Tzedek, when he had a long Yechidus, and after Yechidus, his son the Rebbe Marash, who was then about 12 or 13 years old, came in and the Tzemach Tzedek complained. And the Tzemach Tzedek said to him, that I'm spending time in Yechidus, what do you want from me? I could have sat and learned at that time. The Rebbe Maraj didn't answer anything. The Rebbe Maraj just went over to the Shaf of Svarim, to the bookcase, opened up the curtain that covered the bookcase, and he counted how many Bichlach Siddhis is there that the Tzemach Tzedek wrote, and he counted about 60, 30. And he turned to his father and he said, if not for having Gechidis, would you be able to write all these Mamorim? And the Tzemach Tzedek said, you are right. And then the Rebbe went on to explain what was the question of the Tzemach Tzedek and what was the answer of the Rebbe Maraj, etc., etc., and later the Rebbe was Magia, this piece of the Sikha, and it came as a Pesach Dover to the Likut Sikha, to the Likud that came out that week. And later was printed in Likut Sikha, Schelik Dalet, on page 1361. But the same idea that the Tzemach Tzedek complained that because of his Nesiyas and spending time for others, Yechides, so he's complaining that he doesn't have time to learn. But then he agreed to the Rebbe Marash that because of that he was able to write all these Mamorim and so this is similar to what the Rebbe complained here, that when he took over the Nesiyas, what became of him? He doesn't have time to learn, doesn't have time to daven. But the truth is, this is the union of a Rebbe, and this gives the highest madregas possible, like the Rebbe Marash answered the Tzemach Tzedek. The Seder used to be that before a chasane, the parents of the Chosen would go into Yechidis, their Yechidis, the parents of the Kala would go into Yechidis, and the Chosen and Kala together would go into Yechidis. And the Rebbe would give a bracha, etc., etc. And many times what would happen, that when the chos and the kala went in, after the, when the Rebbe speak, finished speaking to both of them, the kala would walk out and the chos would remain, and the Rebbe would give the chos certain heroes specifically for the chos. So when I went to the Yechidis before my chos, amongst the other things, the Rebbe told me that you should learn, before the chos, you should learn in Reishis Chochmo, Shar HaGdusha, Perik Tesvov, Perik Tazayan and Perik Yudzayan. And you should learn this twice, and both times should be before the Chassan, and before the Chup actually used the Loshan. Because when the Rebbe would tell this to other people, some people would take advantage that during Sheva Parochas, when you have more time, they would finish learning these Inyonim. But me, the Rebbe said clearly that both times should be done far the Chuppe. By the time you get to the Chuppe, you should have learned already both times. 
And the interesting thing is that the Rebbe said to learn Pedik Tasvov also. Pedik Tazayan, the Pedik Tazayan of Sharak Dush and Reshes Chochma deals with the Yonim that have a Shaykhas to getting married. So the Rebbe would tell people to learn Pedik Tazayan and Yud Zayan. Perik Tasvov in Sharak Dusha has nothing to do with getting married. That has to do with the union of Achila, of eating. That you have to eat Lashem Shemayim and all the union that have to do with eating. So usually the Rebbe would tell a Chosen, if he did tell him to do this, he would tell him to learn Perik Tazayan and Perik Yud Zayan before the Chasana. Didn't, he didn't always stress that it has to be finished before the chasana, but he would tell him to learn this. But by me, first of all, the Rebbe says that it should be twice, I should learn it twice, and it should be both before the chasana. And also the Rebbe added, Perik Tasvov. So he told me to learn Perik Tasvov, Tazayin and Yud Zayin of Shara Gdusha in Reishas Chochme twice, and both of them should be finished before the Chup. Maizeya Reb Zalman Malenkin, who was the Rebbe's Malamid, was paralyzed for many years on half of his body. But on Friday, this was Tezayinir, Tov Shunchov Gimel, he got sick, and the doctor came, Dr. Zelikson came, and he said that he had another stroke. And that Friday night, when the Rebbe came out of his room to go down to Kabbalah Shabbos, he was standing by the Rebbe's door, and he spoke to the Rebbe for a long time about this. Exactly what they spoke about, we don't know. Actually, the Seder used to be that when someone saw the Rebbe open the door to come down to Davn or to Fabrengen, would run down ahead and scream, shh, and everyone would become quiet. And within moments, the Rebbe would come in. This time, someone came down screaming, shh, everyone became quiet, waiting for the Rebbe to come in, waiting, waiting, waiting for quite a while, and the Rebbe didn't come. And the reason was because the Rebbe was standing by his room talking to Dr. Zelikson about the Matzav of Maizedah. Motzi Shabbos, after my Rebbe, the Rebbe came up to his room and was in his room for a while, and then went out of his room to go home. My brother, Shalom Ber, happened to be standing in the hallway of 770. And as the Rebbe went out of his room and closed the door and was walking, saw him. So the Rebbe stopped, motioned to him to come over and follow him. And the Rebbe turned around, went back into his room and told my brother to follow him into his room. My brother went into his room, standing there. And the Rebbe went over to the drawer of his desk, opened the drawer and took out a piece of matzah. And he gave it to my brother and he said that Zolzana the Zayda Essen, you should see that your grandfather should eat a little bit of it. And he said, Thomas is schwer as all this Essen, so can this einwecken in Wasser und das reinlegen in sein Mull. If it's hard for him to eat it, then you should soak it in water and it'll become soft and then you could put it into his mouth. And the Rebbe says, Zolzana gute Woche. And I think he said the words, Zolzana gute Woche twice. My brother ran home, took the matzah, tried to put it into his mouth. He was already laying in bed with his eyes closed, in a semi-coma probably, and he couldn't put the matzah into his mouth. So he soaked the matzah and he put it in and probably a few crumbs did go into his mouth. The next morning, which was Lag Baimer, the matzah became worse and the doctor said he has to go to the hospital. So we asked the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, yes, he should go. Then the Rebbe added that they should get a nurse, should be with him constantly, 24 hours a day, and the Rebbe's a private nurse, and the Rebbe said that he will pay for it. And they got a nurse, and he was in the hospital then till Thursday night. Thursday night, he passed away. The Levaya was Friday, Friday afternoon. And the Rebbe went to the Levaya, not only walked on Eastern Parkway, but the Rebbe went into the car and... They drove the Rebbe all the way to the cemetery. The Rebbe did not go into the cemetery. The Rebbe stood outside by the gate and he was watching what was going on by the Levaya. After the Levaya, when he drove home, Reb Shmuel was in the car, Rabbi Chadaka was in the car. The Rebbe said to Reb Shmuel that the reason he didn't go in because if he would go in, he would have to go into the Shver, to the Friedrich Rebbe, to the oil. For that I have to prepare, and I didn't prepare. Shabbos, by the Fabreng, the Rebbe mentioned that it says in Kisve Arizal that anybody who is buried Erev Shabbos after Chatzos is potter from Chibet HaKever. And obviously this was referring to Marzede, who was buried Friday afternoon after Chatzos. And he said that he's potter from Chibet HaKever. It says in Tanya that there is such a thing as Chibet HaKever, and if you're buried Erev Shabbos after Chatzos, it says in Kisve Arizal, then you're potter from Chibut HaKever. 
My Zayda Reb Zalman Vilenkin's wife, her name was Zelda, passed away in Shvat Tovshinchov Hay, which was about two years after my Zayda. My Zayda passed away in Ir Tovshinchov Gimel, and she passed away Tovshinchov Hay. After my Zayda passed away, she moved into my aunt's house, and that's where she stayed till she passed away. When she passed away, the day of her Levaya, that evening, my brother Shalom Ber went into Yechidas for his birthday. In Yechidas, the Rebbe asked him, Ben the Levaya, and he asked him, did they bury her in the same shura, in the same line with your Zayde, with her husband? And my brother said, he doesn't know. And it seemed from the Rebbe that the Rebbe would want that that should have happened. So the Rebbe said to him, when you go out, you'll go into Maskirus and you'll ask him to find out if he, she was buried in the same line of your Zayde. Then the Rebbe said to him, you should have, they should have a candle burning the whole time. And the Rebbe said, I'll give you a candle, a seven-day candle. Because this was Tov Shinchov Hei, so the Rebbe was in the year of Avela, so he had a candle burning. So he had candles in his room. So he said, I'll give you a candle. So the Rebbe started looking for a candle, for the big candles, the seven-day candles to give him. And the Rebbe couldn't find. So the Rebbe said to him, you'll go out, you go into Maskirus, you'll tell him that I said that they should give you a candle. And then the Rebbe also said that you should... Make sure that there is a minion, and I think he said at least once a day in the house where she lived, because she had no children of her own. The male, there was no one sitting Shiva, so there was no minion in the house. So the Rebbe said that you should have a minion in the house, at least I think he said once a day, should be a minion in the house where she lived. My brother, when he went out of Yechidis, went into Maskirus. So first of all, he told him about the candle, and they gave him a candle, which was one from the candles that was going for the Rebbe, and they gave him one of these candles. And then when he, he told him to be Mavader whether she was buried in one line, one shura with my Zayde. So Rabbi Yom and Klein was Mavader and he gave it over to the Rebbe that she was buried in one line. Now we don't know if the Rebbe had instructed them to do this before or the Chaber Kaddish on their own decided to do it or maybe it was just Bahashgacha Prati that it came out the right way that she was buried in one line. And when the gay dominion, we made sure that in my aunt's house where she lived the last few years, there was a minion every day. My mother-in-law's mother, my wife's grandmother, was Esther Bele Lis. She was the wife of the famous Chosid Chaim Meir Lis, who learned in Lubavitch and later he became one of the big mashpim. He was a Polisher, but from Poland as a kid he went to Lubavitch, and then later on he became one of the big mashpim. The Friedrich Rebbe actually once by a Fabrengen said to him that Im Rebina is Fardir. The Im Rebina was a sefer written by the Mittler Rebbe with very, very hard maimorim. And most people don't even understand it. And the Friedrich Rebbe said to him, the Im Rebina was written for you. He passed away in Samarkand. And when the Lubavitchers escaped Russia in Tovshin Vov, Tovshin Zion, by false passports claiming that they are Polish, she and her daughter, my mother-in-law, helped him a lot. Because if they claimed that they were Polish, but they didn't speak one word of Polish. So when they crossed the border, they did a lot and they put themselves out, both of them. And they went to help him. And even after they crossed the border, and then they also had to do things and no one spoke a word of Polish. So they ran, they led the, some groups because they spoke Polish. And they actually went to Mercedes Nefesh for it. And one of the people that they were involved in when they went out was the Rebbe's mother. And later when they crossed the border and they were in Poking, so she also had a strong shaykhist to the Rebbe's mother because she felt that she was able to help her and she helped the Rebbe's mother. When I became a chosen, my future shver wanted to make the vort, my vort, in his house. He lived in Bora Park, he wanted to make it in his house. But I tiny that the Rebbe wants that all simchis should be made in Crown Heights. But he tiny it, it's his house, that's where he lives, he lives in Bora Park. And plus, he said that his mother-in-law, which is the grandmother, Esther Bela, it's hard for her to travel on uh, other places. She was weak, she had a heart condition, etc., etc., so therefore he claimed that he wants that. But I tell him, no, it has to be in Crown Heights. So he said, you know what, ask the Rebbe. So I wrote to the Rebbe, and I wrote that my future Schwer wants to make it in his house. And also, it's because his, 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 his mother-in-law it's hard for her to travel outside of her house. But I say, I wrote this to the Rebbe, that I feel that the Rebbe wants it to be in Crown Heights. 
And my Shver said that whatever the Rebbe will say, that's what he'll do. So I asked the Rebbe, what does the Rebbe want we should do? So the Rebbe did this. He underlined twice the word Bebeisai. When I wrote that he wanted to do it in his house, he underlined twice the word Bebeisai, which means that since it's his house, obviously it's different because this is where he lives. So he made two lines under the word Bebeisai. And then he underlined the few words that I wrote that for his mother-in-law, it's hard to travel to a different place. He underlined those words too. And then he added this. And he said, Valpize Yasekein. According to this, you shall do this. Do it like that. Make it in his house. And then he added in Yiddish, Zi hotes kosher fardint. She really, really deserves it. It's an expression in Yiddish. When you want to say someone deserves something, the Loshin is Zi hotes kosher fardint. And it's interesting. Bechlal, when the Rebbe would answer, on the letter itself, he would write just a few words as an answer, so he always mostly answered in Lashon Kedesh. Whether you wrote it in Lashon Kedesh, you wrote it in Yiddish, you wrote it in English, his answer usually would be in Lashon Kedesh. And here the Rebbe wrote this expression in Yiddish, Zihot es kosher fardint. Obviously the Rebbe knew all her accomplishments, and maybe it's even connected to the fact that she had a shaykh to the Rebbe's mother. So the Rebbe wrote Zihot es kosher fardint. So this was the answer of the Rebbe that he underlined the word Bebeisai twice, which makes this a main reason because it's his house, this is where he lives. And then, when he underlined the words that that for his mother-in-law, it's hard to travel other places, the Rebbe wrote, Val Yasekin. According to this, you should, in other words, when I asked what does the Rebbe want to do, the Rebbe said, Al this is what you should do, do it over there. And he added the words, Zi hot is kosher fardint. And on the date that I wrote that uh, we're planning to make the word, so the Rebbe wrote, for Yehei Bisho Teva Umtzlachas. We know how much the Rebbe wanted that people should pay attention to the Fabringen and Korzechin, what he said, and if they have questions, they should ask. They should show a real interest in the Yonim that the Rebbe speaks about. At Kedekach, that many times the Rebbe would complain by Fabringen why people aren't listening, sometimes they even fall asleep, and people don't ask any questions, and people don't care, etc., etc. And the summer of Tov Shem Chavches, that's when the Rebbe spoke a lot about it. And one of the things it started with is, because in Shabbos, Parshas Baal Loischo, the Rebbe spoke on Pirkei Yovis, Sicha on Pirkei Yovis, and he spoke about the Mishnah in the second Pedic, Mishnah Yud Gimel, where the Mishnah says, Reb Shimon Eimer, Reb Shimon says, and it goes on three things that Reb Shimon said. And the Rebbe said, since Stam Reb Shimon in the Mishnah is Reb Shimon Ben Yechoi, so this is Reb Shimon ben Yechoi. So the Rebbe went on to explain the connection between the three things that he said to Reb Shimon ben Yechoi. Since Reb Shimon ben Yechoi was Teirosa Yim Nose, his whole occupation was only Teira, therefore he said these three things. The Rebbe went on to explain by Riches the connection. The next Fabrengen, which is Shabbos Parsha Shlach, the Rebbe spoke about it again, and he said that this Mishnah is not Reb Shimon ben Yechoi. This Mishnah is Reb Shimon ben Asanel. Because in the previous mission it says, Chamisha Talmidim Hoyle, the Rabbi Yechad Mezaka, Rabbi Yechad Mezaka had five Talmidim, and it mentions their names. One of them is Rabbi Shimon ben Asanel. And then the mission continues what each one of these Talmidim said. And then it says what Rabbi Shimon said. Who's this Rabbi Shimon? Rabbi Shimon ben Asanel, obviously. So he said, How come no one asked the question? But the Rebbe went on to explain that the beer he gave fits to Rabbi Shimon ben Asanel also. And he went to Tarikas to explain that the union of Tirosim Nose that we find by Rabbi Shimon ben Yechoi, also happened by Reb Shimon ben But Mela the beer fits also to Reb Shimon ben Then another Fabrengen later, which was Parshas Bolok, the Rebbe spoke about it again in a very great Ariches. And he said that Lapel Mamish, he did use the lotion that Stam Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon ben Yechoi. So how come no one asked? No one cares. Why didn't they ask it? This is not Reb Shimon ben Yechoi, Reb Shimon ben And the Rebbe went on to say that the reason he said it, because he wanted to test. He said he wanted to see if people will ask. And he went to the that there's a din that you're allowed to say something that's not correct in order to test if they're listening. And he went into Ariches, are you allowed to or you should do that? And then he went into the union that says you should get angry at the people who don't listen. And he went into all Ariches and this whole thing. And he complained very much why no one asked. And that shows that people don't care. And then the Rebbe said that in truth, this is Reb Shimon ben Yechoi. Not physically, but this is Reb Shimon ben Yechoi. Besides the fact that we find a lot of inyonim by Reb Shimon Yechoi, also by Reb Shimon ben Asanel, but the fact that both names were Shimon shows there's a deep connection between the two. And we find the, connect, the inyonim that they're the same. But Mele, in essence, Reb Shimon ben Yechoi said this. And he even used the term, if someone would read this Mishnah independent 
li of what the Mishnah said before, he would automatically say it's Reb Shimon ben Yechai. But mainly in Inyan, this is a statement of Reb Shimon ben Yechai because it fits to the Inyan of what Reb Shimon ben Yechai stands for. So physically, Reb Shimon ben said it, but he was generations before, so Reb Shimon ben Yechai didn't have to repeat it. But it really fits that this would be Reb Shimon ben Yechai. But the main thing we see from here, I mean, the Rebbe bothered the Rebbe that people didn't care. After the Rebbe finished the Sikha, Rabbi Weinberg went over to the Rebbe by the Fabringen, even though usually you don't do such things, but the Rebbe was so upset that he felt he had to say something, and he went over to the Rebbe and he said that the truth is that a lot of people had this question. And after the first Fabringen, when the Rebbe said this, Reb Shimon ben Yechoy, a lot of people had the question. And the Rebbe answered him, Oh, but Sumire das nicht der Geingen. It didn't get to me. In other words, it really didn't bother them. If I'm just saying pshat. If it would bother them, they would write to me. It shows, yeah, they had the question. He didn't mean Dafke that if they have the question or not. Do they care? And then on, in the lot of Fabrengas in that summer, the Rebbe spoke a lot about the importance of listening to the Fabrengan and complaining if people don't listen, etc., etc., from different angles the Rebbe spoke about it. But it shows to us how much we have to kochzach in the Rebbe's sikhs. There was a Bokhar in 770 who was in my time, a little older than me, but he was a friend of mine. And uh, he wondered if he should learn Yerideya or not. So he told me he's going to ask the Rebbe whether he should learn Yerideya. He went into Yechidis and he asked the Rebbe if he should learn Yerideya. And the Rebbe told him he should. And the Rebbe even gave him like a sword of why. He says, a Bokhar that's in Yeshiva for so many years, it's good that he goes out, he should have some kind of something to show for it. Should be some kind of, I didn't use the word degree, it's, it's a Goyesha word, it's a Goyesha Indian, but something to show f- that you know you accomplished, so it's Kedai for him to learn Yerideya. Then he asked the Rebbe, should he also learn part of the Tei Gimore? And the Rebbe told him, and as, and even the, when he told it to me, which about five minutes after he went out, like, there was one word he didn't remember exactly. Or the Rebbe said, Or the Rebbe said, The Teichen is the same, but he just didn't remember that time how the Rebbe said it. But this was the Teichen, that for sure you, part of the time you have to learn Gemara. But he did advise him to learn Yerodeya. In the Chofs, there were quite a few Bochrim who were real Chsidish Bochrim in 770. And they didn't care about their Gash Mizdiki appearance, and they didn't care about their clothes, and didn't care about these things. But the Rebbe wanted that the Bochrim should always be clean and neat. So once by Eferengen, this was Parsha Mishpotim Tov Shin Chof Hei, the Rebbe spoke about it. When the Rebbe spoke about the Rashi, what Rashi says that there was an on on the Posik says, which Rashi says means an ocean of smoke. So Rashi says that the Abish they made for Meish Rabbeinu, a path for where he should go through. And the Rebbe explained why, because since he's going through smoke, he'll get dirty. And he's going to speak to the Ebesh there, so you have to be clean. And the Rebbe quoted the Dean that before davening, you have to be clean, you have to wash your face, your hands and your feet, even though the body doesn't daven, the Nisham davens. Nevertheless, the body has to be clean. And at that point, the Rebbe said, that there is known the letter from the Friedrich Rebbe, the hero from the Friedrich Rebbe in a letter, which is written especially for Talmidei Yeshiva, that they should be very careful about the cleanliness of their body, and especially to hold their teeth clean and to brush their teeth every day, except Shabbos and Yontif. In other words, the Rebbe felt that he had to tell the Bochrim that they should brush their teeth because there were some that wouldn't do it because Minish Gelegen and them, they weren't involved in it. And the Rebbe said that like all other heroes Mephoroshes, when there is a clear hero, what to do, the Yitzhahara fights it. The Yitzhahara opposes it. What he's trying to hint is to say that even though it seems like it comes because you don't care about Gashmias, but this is something that you have to be careful with, and therefore you should know that the fact that some people don't do it comes from the Yitzhahara. So the Rebbe made sure to say that the Bochim should brush their teeth every day except Shabbos and Yontif. This is a story of the Friedrich Rebbe that I heard f- about 25 years ago from my brother in law, the Baron Yitzhak Lieberman, who's the Schlich of the Rebbe in Fort Lauderdale. And he's the Rav of the, the Babish Shul there. And he heard this from Mrs. Golda Wolf, who lived at that time in Fort Lauderdale. She was a member of his Shul. And this happened to her husband. She was the daughter of Rabbi Udaleib Schleifer, who was known as Louis Schleifer. And he was a relative to the famous Kramer family that were very close to the Friedrich Rebbe. And she also had a shaykhah to the Friedrich Rebbe. Her husband was Rabbi Yosef Wolf. In the winter of Tovshin Zayin or Tovshin Chest, 
that's 1947 to 1948, he became very sick, her husband became very sick, and he had a surgery on his gallbladder. The surgery went well, but after he came home, that same night, he started swelling up, and the swelling got so bad that when they wanted to make the tests, they couldn't do it while he was laying or while he was sitting. It had to be done only while he was standing. And the doctors found after the test, they found that he had a certain poisoning, which was called puritonitis, something like that. And they tried to figure out what's the mucker, what's the source where this comes from, this poisoning. They couldn't figure out. And since antibiotics was not so common in those years, they couldn't find any cure for his sickness. And they said they don't even think that he's going to live through the night. Now, he himself was not connected to the Friedrich Rebbe, but his father-in-law, Rabbi the Leibschleifer, was connected, as I said before. And he telephoned right away to the office of the Friedrich Rebbe to ask for a bracha. The Friedrich Rebbe gave a bracha, and he said that they should add a name. And the name that the Friedrich Rebbe suggested was Zelik. Obviously, they did that. And right away, his matzah started becoming better, so much so that the next morning he was able to sit in his chair. And within three days, he already went home completely healthy. And the doctors couldn't understand it. They said this is a gr- simply miracle, a clear miracle from the Friedrich Rebbe. It was a great pele in their eyes. A month later, he went to visit one of the doctors that was involved in taking care of him that night. But that doctor only was there involved that night. Later on, he didn't know what happened. He didn't know what happened to him later. So when he came to visit that doctor about a month later, they told the doctor that Mr. Yosef Wolf is coming to see you. And he said that's impossible because a month ago he died already. He was so sure that he died that he couldn't understand, couldn't be possible that he's here. And the pale, when he saw him, you could imagine how he wondered and the great miracle that he realized. A while later, it once happened that this Rabbi Yosef Zelig went with his wife to a Bisakvaris, to a cemetery, to visit the grave of one of the relatives. In that same cemetery was buried his grandmother, whose name was Sosia. And he thought, let me go see, he made up, he decided that let me go see even that caver of her, because since he was called Yosef, Yosef was after his grandmother's father. And therefore he felt it's a good thing to go and visit the grave of his grandmother, because he's called by the name of her father. When he came there and he read the Matseva, he saw on the Matseva it said, Here is buried Mrs. Sosia Bas Reb Yosef Zelik. That means that he realized then that his grandfather's name originally, the one he was named after, was not just Yosef, but Yosef Zelik. And the Friedrich Rebbe gave that name, chose that name that he should add the name of Zelik. And that family had nothing to do with the Friedrich Rebbe. As a, and, there, and, and they never realized, they forgot that his name was Zelik. And here they saw that the Rebbe said, word, every word of the Rabbeim is Meduyik. So when he chose the name Zelik, it was connected to the fact that his grandfather's name, that he was named after, was really Zelik. So here we see two things, the miracle, the ness, that he became healthy so soon after the Friedrich Rebbe's bracha, and that the name that the Friedrich Rebbe chose was actually the name of the person that he was named after. In the Likud for Likud Siches that came out for Pasha's Hazinu at the end of Tovshin Lama Dalet, and later on that Sicha, that Likud, was printed in Chelik Yudalet, page 148. So there the Rebbe talks about Birchas HaTeira, that we have to make a brocha before we learn Teira. And the Rebbe says there that the fact that we have a special posseg, a special limud, to teach you that you have to make a Birchas HaTeira shows that the union of Birchas HaTeira is different than Birchas HaMitzvah, than the brocha that we make on all mitzvahs. This is a special type of brocha. But in the order 6, the Rebbe says, Aval eine muchrech. It's not muchrech. You don't have to say it that way because, number one, you could say the reason why there's a special limud is because it's deraise, while the other brachas are medarabonon. And the second thing, even according to those that hold that the birchas ha-teir is medarabonon, but still, they found an asmachte, a rai, from a posig. Why? Because this is a mitzvah shebedibur. It's a mitzvah that we do by speaking. It's not the same like other mitzvahs which are done by maise. And originally, when the Rebbe wrote this, he added these words, Ura'ei, and look into the places where it discusses concerning making a brocha and a mitzvah that is bedibur, that is speaking. Now the people who were involved in praying the sikheth assumed the thought that the Rebbe meant that look into different places where you'll see a discussion whether you have to make a brocha and a mitzvah that just bedibur. So they wrote back to the Rebbe that 
we didn't find anywhere there should be a discussion whether you make a brocha on the mitzvah sheba dibur. It's a milsa de pshit, it's a posh de zach. We see we make a brocha on Svira Saimer. They even quoted the prima god in Psycha Kilelis where he says that if anybody would say that you don't make a brocha on the mitzvah sese, which is bedibur, zeli metzona, we don't find it. So what did the Rebbe mean when he writes, re'ei benigeye brochas on the mitzvah shebedibur? So the Rebbe answered in a few words, and he said he meant benigeye birchas hamozen ukayetzah b'seh. It doesn't mean that there's a discussion b'chlal whether we make a brocha on the mitzvah shebedibur. There are specific mitzvah shebedibur that we don't birchas hamozen ukayetzah b'seh. And therefore the Rebbe wrote, when the words when they, they wrote to the Rebbe, le matzonu shak levetaria, we didn't find a discussion benigeye le brocha on mitzvah shebedibur concerning if you make a brocha on mitzvah shebedibur, the Rebbe wrote lecha peseid, look further, Benegeya le divri ad morazokin concerning the words of the Alter Rebbe sheim mevorchen al birchas hamozen that we don't make a bracha on benching and Rebbe wrote a maramokim hagode bitkilosei because in the Rebbe's hagode take not mamish the beginning but closer to the beginning in the last heitzoe it's page tesvov the Rebbe brings that the Alter Rebbe said that the reason we don't make a bracha and the mitzvah lesapri b'tzias mitzrayim to talk about b'tzias mitzrayim pesach night, just like we don't make a brocha on birchas hamozen before we bench, we don't make a brocha levorich birchas hamozen. Ashrekei the shonu b'mitzvahs of itzavon levorich birchas hamozen. And the maramokim there is the sichas of the free the Rebbe from pesach tofresh tzadik zayin. So the Rebbe he wrote, look further into this inyan. You'll see that there is such a thing as not making a brocha on birchas hamozen. And obviously he also meant what it says that if you don't make a brocha sipar b'tzias mitzrayim. And he wrote the maramokim magodash pesach. But, because the question was asked, the Rebbe added and changed the words. Instead of writing, or a A, B'nigei Lebrocha, Mitzvah Shevdi, but the Rebbe wrote a whole Arich, as, as we see now in the Siche, and in Chelik Yudalet, the Rebbe added with his Ksavya, the whole Arich, as Val Derech, She'ei Mevorchen, Al Mitzvah, Zbirchas Hamoz, and Utfila, like we see, when he said it's not the same a mitzvah bedibur, a mitzvah mamaisa, like we don't make a brocha mitzvah birchas hamozen, we don't make a brocha on davening. Then he goes into the ariches, but for krishma we do have birchas krishma, a brocha for krishma. So he brings the whole thing that it's not a brocha like a birchas hamitzvah. It's otherwise with the haora, it's a big long thing that the Rebbe wrote. Instead of that, changed it instead of the words or a benegel a brocha mitzvah shidibur. It's a very general word. And he meant only specific mitzvahs, but it was very in the Kudasdik, so here he added. But the Pele is that when the Rebbe added this Ha'ore, he did not bring the Maramokim from the Haggadah, where it brings the Alter Rebbe's Teretz, why we don't make a brocha on Sipir Beitzis Mitzrayim, and he says, just like you don't make a brocha on and the Rebbe in the Ha'ore doesn't quote it. But as an answer to the ones that wrote the Sikhs, the Rebbe did write that Maramokka. When he said to look further, you'll see, he said, Hagod de Bitchilos, and here he didn't bring it. So we have to look into it why he didn't bring it here. I remember once, I think it was in the end of the Chofs, that Merkaz gave out like a chart made of cardboard with the olive base, I guess to teach children. So it had one page of the chart, the letters of the olive base were in the Kudus, and on the other side, they had the letters, and next to each letter was written out, printed out, the way you pronounce the letter. So there was an Aleph, and next to the Aleph it said, Aleph, Lamet, Fei, with Nekudas, which means Aleph. Then the next, the next one was a Beis, and that said next to it, Beis, Yutsov, with Nekudas, Beis, Yutsov. And that's how it went on throughout all the letters. Then it came to Tzadik, they had a letter Tzadik, and next to it it said, Tzadik, Dalet, Yut, Kuf, Patach, under the Tzadik, and Chirik, under the Dalet, Tzadik. But it was strange that the letters Tzadik, Dalet, Yud were the regular print. The Kuf looked a little bit different. It looked it was as if it was added by the hand to make it Tzadik. So what we heard then, what happened was, and I think, I don't remember whom I heard it from, but I think it was definitely from a Bar Samcha that knew the insides, what was going on, that when Merkis printed it, we know that the letter is called Tzadi. It's not called Tzadik. Predicted the letter is Tzadi. The reason people call it Tzadik because when you say the letters, you say Tzadi Kuf. So when you say Tzadik and then Kuf, it sounds like Tzadik. But really it's Tzadi and then Kuf. So when they printed it, they wrote Tzadik Dalet Yud. That's the name of the letter. They gave it into the Rebbe. The Rebbe told them to add a Kuf. It should be called Tzadik. But it was already typeset, so they added it by hand and that's how they printed it. 
Now it seems the pshat is that even though really it's tzaddik, but because it became known as tzaddik, it's kedai to call it tzaddik, and that's how they printed it, even though they had to enter it by hand. We know how much the Rebbe was medayik in Lukut Sikhis, even in, in expressions. So I want to bring an example, and this is in the Sikha that was prepared for Parsha Kiseitse Tovshin Lamed Dalet, which later is the si- printed in Lukut Sikhis Chelik Yudalet, Parsha Kiseitse, page 86. So I want to mention something that the Rebbe changed. There, in the beginning of the second Sif, was written that the union of Timcha Zecher HaMolek, to destroy the Zecher HaMolek, means that you should destroy it from your mind, from your machshave, from your thought, from your heart. And it said, the ain't a movement, it's not understood. Tzivu is al pula maisis. A commandment is shayich on an act that you do. But how is it shayich a tzivu to destroy the Zecher HaMolek? That means that you should sit and make it forgotten from your heart. L'chura, it's not in the the ability of a person to be mavatl the machshava, the zikor that he has from before. That's how it was written. So on these words where it said that tzivu yishayich al pula maisis, that a tzivu yishayich only on an act that you do, the Rebbe crossed out those words and the Rebbe wrote mavhil. Mavhil means it's outrageous. How could you say such a thing? Harayesh gam alav. How do you make such a statement that a tzivu, a commandment yishayich only on an act? There are commandments on a love. A love means what you shouldn't do, so it's a commandment on not to do. Now, what it was meant was that you can't give a tzivui on something that's in your heart. But the expression that was written, that a tzivui shayich on a pool of maisiyas on an act, is not true. Because we find a tzivui commandments on a love. There are 365 commandments what not to do, so it's not a tzivui on a maisiyas. So the Rebbe changed it. The Rebbe just wrote like this. There ain't a movement. How could it be a tzivoy to destroy a molek? Which means, mi from your machshove. And the Rebbe wrote, the other Rebbe, on the contrary. When you remind yourself on the commandment, that itself reminds you of a molek. That's the shayla. And in the second Agod, the Rebbe even added many more words. He added the words before this part that he wrote, that other Rebbe, if you remind yourself, the tzivui that reminds you Amolik, the Rebbe added, the Posik should have said, Zeicher Amolik leyi alipcha. The Zeicher of Amolik should not be on your heart. A toser melipcha bechol, or take it away from your heart. Hainu shaleyachshev al vala Amolik barotz, and it means that you shouldn't think about the Amolik willingly. Avol eini balabos, but you're not a balabos, you're not in control. And the word balabos is in Gershayim in quotations. Al var machshavte concerning your thought shaleyipel. And the word Yippel is in quotation that it shouldn't fall into your machshav as Zechar HaMolik. That's the question. How could you be at Sivui that it shouldn't fall into your mind? And then the Rebbe added, Val derech maimer azal, like we know the maimer chazal, gimel averis inot and mitzvah b'chol yeim. There are three averis a person, no person could be saved from it every day. And one of them is hirhure avera, thoughts of avera, that you can't stop from those coming into your mind. And then the Rebbe wrote a ha'ora on this that he said, the Maimar Azal, Gimel Averis, in Nitzel, and Bechol Yeim, a long ha'ora about this Inyan itself, which is written as ha'ora because it's not direct in the gate of the Inyan. It's a side thing, but the Rebbe wrote that long, long ha'ora there. It was not the Chofs, and I was once standing in Maskirus, speaking to one of the Maskirim, I don't remember exactly what, asking for something, and also Rabbi Yom Karadetsky happened to be standing there, also doing something. And as I'm standing there, I see from the Rebbe's room, the door opens, and the Rebbe walks out. He's going out to the outside. I don't remember if he was going home, or he was going to the mikveh, going to the oil, but he was walking out. And as he's walking out, going to the outside, he l- glances into the door of the mosquitoes, is open, he looks into the door of mosquitoes, and he sees Rabbi Yom Karadetsky there. So the Rebbe walked into mosquitoes, and in the office there, stopped and was talking to him. And I was standing not far. I felt so uncomfortable that standing there and the Rebbe's talking to him, uh, obviously it wasn't something private because I don't remember what they were talking about, but I do remember the Rebbe was speaking loud. It wasn't, and he knew that there, I was standing there. And I don't remember if anybody else was there, but the Maskirin was there, but the Rebbe spoke for a few minutes. He spoke to him there inside 
Maskirus, and this was not planned because he was on the way home, he was on the way out. And I saw when he looked in, he just happened to see him. So, so he walked in and he was standing speaking there for quite a few minutes and I was standing there on the side not knowing what to do with myself. And then when he finished, he walked out and went to the door and went to the outside. This is also one of those feelings that I always remember very feeling very, very uncomfortable standing in a place that the Rebbe is right there and is able to see you. But how we know that the Bochrim always used to try to hide from the Rebbe. If you would stand outside, not even in the middle of Seder where you felt that you were doing something wrong, but outside and the Rebbe was coming, everyone would hide. It's based on Yerushalmi where it says, Reuni Norim and Rebbe brings the posse that you should hide when you see the Rebbe. And everyone felt uncomfortable that the Rebbe could look at your face and he sees exactly what you are and he looks at you. Even when the Bochum stood by davening, everyone tried to stand behind somebody else that when the Rebbe would pick up his head to look, so the Rebbe uh, would see you, so you tried to hide that the Rebbe shouldn't see you. And here I'm standing, right, all the way open, all the way myself, standing there and the Rebbe is talking to him and he's able to see me. But a few minutes passed and uh, the Rebbe walked out and I walked out of Maskiros. But that feeling remained with me forever, that feeling that standing there for a few minutes in the presence of the Rebbe.